July 19th, St. Vincent de Paul. Even in the most degenerate of ages, when the truths of the gospel seem to be ignored even among those who profess it, God raises fruitful ministers to revive charity in the hearts of many. One of these instruments of divine mercy was St. Vincent de Paul. He was born in the year 1576. His parents occupied a very small farm upon the produce of which they brought up a family of four sons and two daughters, Vincent being their third child. He recounts later in life how he used to have the job of guarding the pigs on this farm. Vincent was a bright and dedicated child and adolescent. He was sent to the University of Toulouse, where he finished his studies, and in the year 1600 was ordained priest at the extraordinary age of 20. Soon after his ordination, legend has it that he was captured by pirates and carried into Barbary. He converted his renegade master, and they both escaped to France. While being one of the chaplains of Queen Margaret, he went one time into a lodge with a friend in Paris. His friend was robbed of 400 crowns. This friend charged Vincent with the theft, thinking it could be no one else, and in this persuasion he spoke against him with the greatest virulence among his friends. Vincent calmly denied the fact, saying God knows the truth. He bore this slander for six months, when the true thief then confessed. St. Vincent related in a spiritual conference with his priests, but in the third person, to show that patience, humble silence, and resignation are generally the best defense of our innocence, and always the happiest means of sanctification sanctifying our souls under slanders and persecutions. While at Paris, Vincent became the tutor to the children of Philip de Gondi, the Count of Jonet. Madame de Gondi was attracted by Vincent and chose him for her spiritual director and confessor. This association was lifelong and would provide valuable in helping create what was to be Vincent's legacy. In the year 1617, he became pastor at chatelon le dombe where he converted the notorious Count de Rougemont and many others from their scandalous lives. Balthazar de Rougemont's conversion was so great that he transformed his castle into a hospital for the body and for the soul and obtained permission to expose the blessed sacrament in the chapel he made numerous donations to the convents and monasteries of the region he wore for the rest of his life the habit of the compusion with whom he was buried soon after this conversion saint vincent returned to paris and began work among the galley slaves he was officially appointed chaplain to the galleys and in the year sixteen twenty two gave a mission for the convicts in them at bordeaux now his association with madame de gondé came to full fruition for together they started a new community where its members were to renounce ecclesiastical preferment to devote themselves to the smaller towns and villages and to live from a common fund they were called vincentians they are a congregation of secular priests who make four simple vows of poverty chastity obedience and stability they are employed in missions especially among country people and undertake the direction of diocesan and other seminaries they now have colleges and missions in all parts of the world st vincent lived to see twenty-five houses founded in france piedmont poland and other places including madagascar for years st vincent went through the streets of paris at night seeking the children who were left to die to continue this work he founded the sisters of charity originally funded by the elite women of paris it now numbers a membership of over twenty-five thousand people they attend to the poor sick persons in each parish of whom it is said that their convent is the sick room and their chapel the parish church their cloister is the streets of the city during the wars in lorraine being informed of the miseries to which those providence were reduced he sent his missionaries to the poor and suffering during his own life he also ransomed over twelve hundred christian slaves from north africa alone he was sent for by king louis the thirteenth as he lay dying and was in high favor with the queen regent anne of austria who consulted him in ecclesiastical affairs toward the end of his life he suffered much from serious ill health he died in the autumn of the year sixteen sixty on september twenty seventh calmly sitting in his chair 
St. Vincent, the peasant priest, was canonized by Pope Clement XII in 1737, and by Pope Leo XIII he was proclaimed patron of all charitable societies, outstanding among which is the society that bears his name and is infused by his spirit, founded by Frederick Ozam in Paris in 1833.